ladies and gentlemen welcome to lesson 11 the topic is classification of organisms and uh, today we want to look at class Aves. this class belongs to phylum codata so i want to welcome you once again all our dear students and uh, thank you for following this uh, uh, this page i want to, to request you to share the page with other students so that they also benefit from these good lessons so you can see there these beautiful members of class elves well how do you call them locally they are called birds so birds belong to class elves and they are the birds and their relatives they are about 10,000 species of birds worldwide so they are quite many yeah, and most of them, by the way, in the tropical world, in, the, in tropical Africa, South America, Australia, that's where most of the bird species are located. So they are of different types. They are different types. Which one do you recognize there? Well, I see the crested crane, the beautiful uh, crested crane, which is also the national emblem for the country of Uganda. Uh, great and then which ones there do you recognize the penguins uh, the mother penguin they are nursing the young one the peacock wow the kiwi and the ostrich so those are some of the apart from the peacock the rest of these other ones are flightless the Flightless, flightless birds, they cannot fly. The, the, the kiwi, the ostrich, and the penguins. Uh, let's look at the characteristics of birds. They bear feathers. That one is universal in most in the birds. They lay eggs that are having shells. They lay shelled eggs or cladoic eggs. And then they bear scales, especially on their legs. Their legs have scales for protection. And then uh, their limbs are modified into wings for flight. And then they exhibit internal fertilization, meaning they, the eggs are fertilized before they are laid. They have well-developed cladoic eggs with the yolk and so on to where the young one can grow from the chick if it is the chicken they are homeothermic these members are able to maintain normal body temperature so unlike the other three classes we looked at earlier the fish the the, the reptiles and amphibians that are cold blooded the birds are warm blooded they have warm temperature which is constant they possess lungs for gaseous exchange so well, let's look at some other facts about birds did you know that the chicken are the most common species of birds found in the world if you have not reared one before it's high time you rear one at least so that you join the big team of people rearing chicken all over the world Scientists believe that birds evolved from the theropod dinosaurs. So as you can see, uh, that member there that looks like the ostrich. So we, we, the, the dinosaurs existed earlier and they used to be reptiles. But what knocked them out was their large bodies. They had the extremely large bodies. It became difficult to regulate temperature and uh, sustain their lives. So they, they, they died out. They got extinct. But it is believed that from those reptiles, called the dinosaurs, the birds emerged. And there is a scientific evidence to show. There is an archaeological evidence to show that relationship. Uh, the ostrich is the largest bird in the world so far. If you discover another one, you let us know. But so far, the ostrich is the largest bird in the world. And also lays the largest egg. And then, did you know that it is also the fastest terrestrial bird especially that that runs on land it is the fastest bird on land it runs to up to 97 kilometers per hour that is 
the fastest speed ever run by the ostrich. That's almost faster than the taxi. That is serious. The hummingbird can fly backwards. Interesting, that small bird there. It's one of the smallest birds. Uh, it can fly backwards and it's very small. It's about just five centimeters long. Yeah. Then the kiwi, uh, endangered species, but currently they are found in New Zealand um, and some parts of Australia. And uh, when you compare the egg they lay with their body mass, they lay the largest egg relative to their body size. When you compare the eggs laid by birds and their body sizes, the kiwi lays the largest compared to its body size. However, the overall largest egg is laid by the ostrich. But if, if you compare the per body size, the kiwi then lays the largest uh, egg. Similar to the ostrich, the kiwi is also a flightless bird. It cannot fly. There is that uh, member there. The owl. The owl cannot move its eyes. Did you know that? The eyes are just static, but the, the neck can move for about 360 degrees. It can rotate its neck all throughout. And I think that is the advantage it has. It compensates for the static eyes. So the, 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 the highly mobile neck compensates for the static eyes. And then for it, when it hunts its prey, it does not leave anything. It eats all, all of it. It doesn't throw anything. So that is the characteristic of the owl. Then the, the homing pigeons are bred to find their way home from even long distances away. So these members can, even if you take them so far away from home, they can always return back. So they have that great memory of returning back. And uh, in the ancient Greece, they were used to, to, to carry messages, to send messages to different people. So they can be, they can be used as post office agents delivering messages to people because they can find their home even if they are very far away yeah so uh remember olympics started from olympia in greece and during those olympic games they would use the pigeons for delivering results to the tallying center yeah well that's interesting you could rear the pigeons as well they are cheaper to rear you just build for them a house and get a pair of the pigeons, male and female, and then they start their life. They have a very high reproductive rate. Um, other facts, the ducks can sleep with one eye open. I think some of us can also do that, some few members, but uh, that was a joke. The ducks can sleep with one eye open. So you may think they are still looking at you, but they are actually asleep. So it is one of the mechanisms of uh, scaring the predators. And then the parrots can learn to say very many words. Par you can teach a parrot a number of words and they can also mention those words. They can speak after you. They imitate sound. And then uh, around 20% of the bird species migrate long distances every year. Those ones are called the migratory birds. And there are even those that fly all the way from Europe to Lake Victoria or to the tropical part of Africa every year. So they are called migratory birds. Well, thank you very much. Let's look at the mammals now. Having looked at birds, there is a very close similarity between birds and mammals. Who can mention that? Who remembers what we said? Well, the mammals and the birds both have ability to maintain a constant body temperature. Yeah, they are homeothermic or the or endothermic. So we are going to look at the mammals. Mammals stay on land, they are those in aquatic environment. So we shall see them. So there are about 5,000 mammalian species currently in the world. There are very many also, but not compared to birds, of course. Uh, the characteristics include the following. They have mammary glands, and those are glands that uh, usually produce milk for breastfeeding. 
position of the pinna or the external ear. When you look at the mammals, the antelopes, the goats, the dogs, or even man, they have an external part of ear that you can even pull. That one is called the pinna. I hope you have seen one for the rabbit. Very long. And you can even use it for holding the rabbit. They are endothermic or homeothermic, meaning they can maintain constant body temperature, irrespective of changes in the external what? temperature. They have that ability. Ability to lose heat and to gain heat. Then they undergo or they participate in internal fertilization. They fertilize their eggs internally and they are also able to carry them for some time until they are able to survive outside. Then they give birth. Their skin bears fur or hairs. They have hairs around the skin and those ones are used for many reasons. Either camouflage or protection against heat loss and so on and so forth. Then they have sebaceous glands and also mammary glands. They are mostly viviparous. This one means they are able to produce young ones that are alive. So you can see that beautiful mother and the young one, the giraffe and the young one, uh, produce young ones alive. So other facts about mammals, they evolved alongside the dinosaurs. Remember the dinosaurs, the huge reptiles? Yes. And most of them were smaller. Dinosaurs were bigger. Then once the dinosaurs were unable to live, eventually they got eliminated, they got extinct. Uh, the mammals now got a chance to survive because there was little competition and uh, there was little harm of, of predation from the dinosaurs. And then uh, most of the mammals that are in large numbers are usually the small mammals, the rats and the mice. The larger mammals are find it difficult to live in large numbers. The mammal with the longest gestation period or the time it takes when it is pregnant is an elephant. It takes 22 months. How many years are those? That, that's almost two years. One year and ten months. Then it gives. So if they are to fill the world, <laughs> they will need more years, I think, to live than us. And then the one which takes the shortest time gestation period is the Virginian opossum. This one only takes 12 days and gives birth. Only 12 days. So this one, there is no wastage of time. Yeah? Meaning in a month, it can produce at least twice. So in a year, they can produce about 25 or 26 times. So this would be a good one to rear because they would give you very many young ones in a very short time. The loudest mammal on earth is the blue whale. It can call it can call for a very long distance, it can produce a sound almost like a bomb. The blue whale. Yeah, it's also one of the largest mammals uh, that we have. Then the only mammal that can afford to fly is called the bat yeah so the bat can fly but it has all the features of the mammal it just has an adaptive radiation development of the skin stretching of the skin to form a long web uh, on its four limbs uh, that can be used as a wing for flight yeah modification that is very interesting and then some mammals like the spine antenna do not have teeth so these members don't have teeth they just have uh, an extended part of the mouth that is used for catching the they usually eat insects like the termites so they don't have they don't need to chew they just swallow then the shrews these ones are very small they are like rats uh, they have a very small body uh, fat they are very small they cannot go for more than a couple of hours without food no they don't have fat remember when all the carb uh, carbohydrates are used up then the fats are alternative source of energy. But for them, they don't have, they have very little fat, if at all. So if they take long without eating, they risk dying. And in fact, even if they went to sleep and they take long sleeping, 
they will continue and die from the sleep. That is how dangerous their life is. So they have to continue eating always. And also their body is small, so they have a high uh, metabolic rate to compensate for the heat loss because they have a high surface area to volume ratio, uh, so they can lose more heat. And yet they are supposed to keep warm. So those members are always very mobile. And then, do you know the polar bear? That member there is called the polar bear. Actually, it looks white, but it, it does... Uh, that the fur is not actually white. It's actually colorless. But simply because when you put very many colorless things together and pile them, they look white. And when you remove the fur, the skin is actually dark. Yeah, so the polar bear looks white, but the fur is not actually white. So members, welcome to Kidas Mammalia. We are going to look at more details about it. Uh, they have subclasses. We have subclass Prototheria, a, a subclass of class Mammalia called subclass Prototheria. This one includes the mammals that lay eggs. We have been saying that mammals are highly advanced and so on. That is true. But there are also some mammals that have all the characteristics, but they are still a little bit primitive because they still lay eggs. The spine antenna, antenna and the duck build plate pass. Those ones lay eggs. But they lay very large eggs that have the yolk. Uh, and, but their young ones, after hatching, still circle. Yeah, they breastfeed. So those are the members that lay eggs. Yeah. Then we have subclass Theria. These are non-egg laying mammals. And they are divided into two groups. We have the Metatheria. Or sometimes called the, the Masupialia. The Metatheria or Masupialia. Those are the Masupials. Those are the poached mammals like the kangaroos they are mammals which have porches in which the young ones are located and they circle for most of their development having been born in very immature state in fact yeah they are there for life support they, they give birth to immature young ones and then those young ones complete their life cycle in the porch and that porch is well equipped with the mammary glands and teeth where they circle as they complete their life cycle there. Those members are called, uh, they belong to subclass Theria, and they are in, in a, a smaller group of Theria called Metheria, the, 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 poch, the poached mammals. So those are the examples of the poached mammals or the marsupials. They include the, the koalas, the kangaroos, uh, the docopsis, the bilby, and so on. So those are the members. They have porches, as you can see there. The young one grows from the porch. Then we have another class of theria called eutheria. These are placental mammals. These are mammals whose young ones develop to mature states, to all mature ones when they are still inside the womb or placenta before they are born. So the young ones stay in the womb of the mother or of the female until they are ready to live outside. That's when they are born. And including man, that is where we belong. So this, this subgroup includes very many odd orders and we are going to look at them. Uh, order insectivora, this one includes the moles and the shrews. Those ones eat insects. Then carnivora, order carnivora. These ones include the cats and the dogs. The cat, the cat members. Those ones eat uh, flesh. Then cetacea. These include the dolphins and the whales, the aquatic mammals that live in water. Then we have chiroptera, includes the flying mammals, the bats. Then we have order rodentia, which includes the rats, the rodents. Uh, then we have other primates, which are the most cephalized and the most dignified and the most advanced uh, order in uh, the whole of animal kingdom. The monkeys, the apes, uh, where humans are. 
Then we have other proboscide where we have the elephants. They have a very long snout, a very long trunk. Then we have other ungulet, which includes the cows, the herbivores, largely. So let's start with the insectivora. Other insectivora, these ones feed on insects. They include the hedgehogs and their relatives. Then we have uh, other carnivora, where we have members that are carnivores. They purely feed on other living animals. They hunt them and kill them, and then they feed, they feast on them. The cats, the polar bears, the wolves, and so on. And then we have the marine mammals, the cetacea, other cetacea, where we have the dolphins and then the whales. Yeah. Then we have other chiroptera, the flying, the only flying mammals, the bats. And then we have other rodentia, the rodents, including the squirrels and the rats, the porcupines, the mice, and their relatives, as you can see there. These are rodents, and they will live much more closer to humans. They benefit a lot from humans by eating their crops. And then we have other proboscidae, and currently there are only two remaining species of this order. The African elephant, which is the largest terrestrial mammal currently, and then the Asian elephant. So those are the only two surviving uh, members of order proboscidae. What makes them belong to that order is the possession of the long trunk. And then we have order ungulate, where we have most of the herbivores, the hippopotamus, the giraffes, those that eat, they graze, then there are those that browse. The grazers and the browsers all belong to order ungulate. Then we have the most supreme of the orders, the primate. Yeah, order primate is where we have all these members, the vervet monkeys there, the gorillas, the chimps, and man, most importantly, we belong to that order. So thank you very much. Let's move to problems faced by animals living on land. Living on land is not obvious. There are challenges that organisms that live on land face, and they include the following. They have a challenge with obtaining support. Yeah, they need support structures, otherwise it will be hard. They have a challenge of risking to lose water. They have a problem with gaseous exchange. Uh, they must have a system to, to, to where gases could exchange. They have a challenge with the maintaining internal body system. Yeah, the tissue fluid stability, homeostasis. And then they have a challenge of how to reproduce without water. So those are challenges that they face. A challenge of obtaining support, the need for the second, therefore, a challenge of losing water, and then therefore need for water conserving mechanisms. And then also challenge of gaseous exchange, and therefore a need for a respiratory system, a challenge of homeostasis, a challenge of reproduction without water. Now, how have they adapted to be able to overcome the challenges? The first one is they have structures for gaseous exchange. They have developed a, a gaseous exchange surface, the lungs and so on that are moist where gases can exchange from and then also some of them live in damp habitats in wet places then others live in they have airtight surfaces like the reptiles and the birds they have airtight what surfaces and then the, the others excrete nitrogenous wastes that do not require a lot of water for their excretion like urea Others undergo internal fertilization, where most of the gametes are not wasted. And then also others lay eggs, which have shells that can each easily hatch on the terrestrial habitat. And then they have the skeleton for support in the air. And then, they are most, then the, the two members, the two classes, the class Aves and class Mammalia, are able 
to maintain constant body temperature, irrespective of changes in the external temperature. So they are, they are homothermic or endothermic. So members, thank you very much. I hope you still remember the five kingdoms we looked at. We have just concluded now the five kingdom classification. You remember kingdom Monera? Remember the bacteria? Mm -hmm. Oh, kingdom Prokaryote. Then kingdom uh, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia. You must remember them. Also remember the different phyla in each one of those, or divisions in each one of those kingdoms and classes where necessary and then the characteristics in each case and then the members. Thank you very much. I want to special appreciation to Mr. Jude Mayanja Nakapanka, Mr. Ochen Julius, rest in peace, uh, from St. Peter, S.S. Achoa, and Reverend Sister Florence Kajoina. Uh, this content is dedicated to all teachers and students of biology. Please, to get more of this, such content, subscribe to my YouTube channel and then benefit as a student or teacher. Thank you so much and may God bless you.